If you saw my previous video, you would know that Parallels has just recently released an update allowing it to support Windows 10 ARM on the M1 Max. Now, unfortunately, obviously this isn't the x86 version of Windows, so we are losing out on some compatibility. But for now, just over one month after the release of the M1s, I think the future is looking pretty good for Windows support and also virtual machines on Apple Silicon. Now, in this video, I wanted to do a brief benchmark using Parallels on my M1 Mac, just to see how it performs in the early stages. Now, I am using a base model M1 Mac Mini, but this obviously has the exact same M1 CPU that all the other M1 Macs have. So for the purposes of this test, it doesn't really matter if I'm using a Mac Mini, a MacBook Air, or a MacBook Pro, they're all gonna perform pretty much the exact same. The only real difference between the models is obviously the fan on the Pro and the Mini, and also the extra GPU core on the Pro and the Mini, and some Air models. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer, and we'll have a look at some benchmarking. Okay, so first things first, what I initially did is I did a Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark just on Mac OS, so not using any kind of parallels or anything like that. And as you can see here, the Mac Mini is pulling a very, very impressive single core score of 1747 and a multi-core score of 7700. So right off the bat, that is just very, very impressive, especially this single core score, which actually beats out pretty much every single Intel CPU currently available on the market. So what we'll do now is we'll launch up the Windows Parallels virtual machine and we'll see what we can get on there. And what we'll do first of all, before we actually launch the VM, is we'll come in here to the settings and I'll show you guys how I have it set up. So if we come into the hardware and then the CPU and memory section, you can see that I'm currently using all eight processors to do the VM. Now I have tested it at two, which is the recommended. I've also tested it at four and I've also tested at eight. Uh, now there's obviously a huge difference between two and four, um, but going from four to eight, there's not quite as big as a difference. But again, this is a technical preview of parallels. So the fact that this is even running at all is very impressive. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna change this back to four and I'm going to save that, close that down and we're gonna launch Windows 10. Now, if I launch Internet Explorer, you can see I've already done these tests and I wanted to obviously do them without any kind of programs running in the background and also while screen recording was not happening just so you can get a really accurate score. So we can see here the single core score is 1518 and that is using four cores. And then the multi-core score for four cores is close to 5,000. And if we come over here to where I tested the eight cores, we can see the single core score is a little bit better and the multi-core score is quite good as well. Now, if we actually compare this to what we were getting before. So you can see here Geekbench running natively on the Mac was able to score 1747 for a single core and then through parallels 1547 and then the multi-core score close to 7700 native on the Mac and then 6200 through Windows parallels. So you can see there, there definitely is a performance drop but honestly guys, in terms of actual raw performance, it's honestly not that much at all. You have to understand like this is essentially a beta version of Windows 10 ARM and also a technical version. So not even a beta version of Windows Parallels and the M1 Max have been out for just over four weeks at this point. So these kind of scores are extremely impressive. Now, if we actually come here and we look at the benchmarks, so let's just take the eight core score as an example. So close to 6,200 on the Mac. If we come here and we select multi-score and we go to about 6,200. You can see right now we are scoring about the same as a Ryzen 7 2700, um, but even some of the i7, so the i7 9700, we're pretty much bang on that. And also with some of these other higher end Intel CPUs, we're getting very, very close. But I think the most interesting comparison is actually going to be the single core score. So let's just round this off at about 1550. And let's come here and let's see what the Intel counterparts are doing. So about 1550, we're about there. So you can see here, this is actually getting the same scores as the new 5000 series AMD chips. So the 5600X, which has just been released with six cores, 
the M1 is right on par with that. And if we actually look at the native score on Mac OS 1750, it's actually beating every other AMD and Intel processor on the market right now. So if we're getting this kind of performance on Parallels already, you can see there's really not much of a performance drop here at all. Even if we just go to the four core score of 5,000, if we come to the multi-core benchmarks here, we scroll down to about 5,000. You can see this is where we're ending up. So essentially an i5 9600K, uh, that's what it's equal to. But bear in mind, this is using a beta version of two softwares and it's also running through a VM and it's essentially beating the offerings from Intel around this same mark. And even some of the Ryzen processors. So you can see here the 3500X of 5,167. We are pretty much bang on in terms of multi-core scores between the two. Now in terms of other benchmarking for Windows 10 um, running through Parallels, there's really not much else at this point. I tried to do Cinebench and a few other x86 apps, but they just wouldn't work at all. So fingers crossed, either Parallels comes up with a solution or Microsoft implements x86 virtualization, which I think they're actually gonna be doing soon. But all in all, as it is now, it's gonna be very exciting to see how this goes. And I think if we go 12 months into the future and then look back, there's gonna be some amazing improvements and performance increases. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Any comments or questions, leave them below. But apart from that, I will catch you in the next one.